we, we started, you know, when Dad got this place 40 years ago, yeah. we were just doing fairly conventional beef farming. Mm -hmm. um, and we found, we, were, we found we were more and more getting towards it mm. to the point where I thought, when I came back from Melbourne and I saw where Dad was at, we went, you know, why don't you get organically certified? Yeah. Because that'll mean something. Either people will yeah. recognise that, yeah. you're doing it. Yeah. Um, you know, and you, you know, you, you've got, we got away from you. We were just finding that the, there was a finite life to using chemical. You, yeah. You could, you get your boost, and it was less, and it was less, and it was less, and it was less. Yeah. Was like, yeah. You know, you got your, you get your hit from it, but yeah. As the years went on, and it just was running the place out, and you could see everything from all around the place was being run out. Yeah. We have switched from it. Now we get people next door asking, "What are you putting in your place?" <laughs> yeah. You're doing seafood. No. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. It's um. Uh, and and that's what happens with a lot of the conventional farming and that sort of thing too. As they as they bombing paddocks and, and soil and stripping away that nutrients out of the ground and the, you know and the microbiomes out of the ground, um, they've got to use more and more yep. to continue to get that growth coming through. And you have to sort of take that hit in there somewhere to get off it, where yeah. the yeah. place really does you know goes backwards and then yeah. and it kicks back in. Yeah. Rockland River that comes down there. Yep. So they join the now place just over there. Mm. They they both dry up. Some years the Brockman runs through. Been doing never. Oh, wow. But there's an underground water course that runs. You see that little white dot in the paddock yeah, over yeah, there? Yeah. yeah. It's a bore casing. Right. Runs yeah. that side yeah. of that, past under this trough, through this low line here. Yeah. Out through those paper barks in next door, yeah. and then back into that swamp, and it just keeps. Keeps filtering the water through, yeah, yeah. Right. and that's what keeps clover all through there. Yep. Cooch has got longer roots. Yep. Clover's a bit shorter. Yep. We can get there, and you'll see in the low lying area, like little knobby hollows. Yeah. And they'll fill up with like cooch, and if they're deep enough clover. Yeah. Because they can hit the water table. They can yeah tap into the tap into the underlying yeah, water. There's lots of beautiful clover. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's yeah. Uh, I was saying to Gary, that's just kilos. Yep. Go straight into. Them. So what were you saying with on this clover they're putting on a kilo a day at the moment? Sometimes. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's 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 feedlot. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I get feedlot numbers out of it. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, yeah. Through some of those, that's how <laughs> we just it almost they they almost mark time. Mm. So I've got, I've got to have them, a lot of them running up to wait coming yep. into Christmas. Yeah. Because mm. I won't get much between Christmas and can push out to can push out as late to now. Yeah. You can mm. get you can get a pretty slow six months in there. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the that's what we're looking for is and there was a, plenty of this nice lush stuff and then they, yeah, they there was whack a, on the weight and then once the weather warms up and this stuff really springs up through the ground, um, the cattle won't be burning up the calories keeping themselves warm. Yeah. Then we get that nice coverage and confirmation on the yeah. carcasses. Which and, is, um, and look, you know, I've had these get up to 28 mil of fat on them. Yeah, right. It gets to the point where I can't get them to you quick enough. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. start going, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 15 mils is okay, but 20 isn't. <laughs> well, I mean, a lot of a lot of our customers, um, you know, they look at the, a lot of them. A lot of them engaging in the paleo and, and keto type diets and lifestyles. Yeah. You know, so they're they're eliminating sugar and carbs out of their diets and wanting that good fat. Yeah. You know, that grass fed fat. Um, and that's their that's their fuel source. Well do it yourself. So yeah. when when your cattle is getting sick, do you get the vet the um, yeah the we'll do the vet over at Gingin. Yeah, okay. They, they come in and do their thing. Uh, it's rare that I get them in. Yeah. Um, either it's bad enough, it's terminal, mm -hmm. or uh, the cattle are hardy enough, it's not a thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Occasionally, look, because we don't drench or anything. No. Because we're organic. Occasionally, you'll get one that just doesn't do well, and I yeah. dare say, if you chuck them off. Um, uh, check enough drench or whatever it might come good yeah. we just quit it yeah, yeah okay. it's, yeah. if you're not hard enough to work it out <laughs> yeah we're no. survival of the fittest eh? yeah look it just it just means you heard um, stays healthy yeah yeah, yeah. a bit more robust it makes yeah. more robust animals yeah um, and look it's a, and it's a healthy ecosystem thing yeah. as well if you've got and if you're moving them regularly mm -hmm. if they stay too long in one place mm -hmm. yeah 
particularly wet year a few years ago, we got the scows in the car, so they just get bacteria in their gut and they yeah. can dehydrate them and, yeah. and kill them. Um, yeah. But if you're moving them paddocks, you know, yeah. you're, less, you're less risk of that. <laughs> Coming down just yeah. as I stand here. You do. Good. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, climate change. When I was a kid, this used to flood out right through here. Oh, it's like, like a big floodplain. Yeah, I used to come from a motor you know, in a road bike when I was a kid, and be, I'd, I'd be having to watch them taking the engine out of the water. Wow. Um, that, so, really rarely do we get it floating out now. Yeah. Oh, 2016. When, yeah, that was when all the we were all really wet, yeah. all the men, yeah, yeah, yeah. That it got up and flooded out in some of the lower areas, probably the next paddy cup, not yeah. much in here, but yeah. there were sort of hollows out in there, there was standing water. Yeah. So it does get to that, but I mean, this is low at yeah. the moment. Um, normally you expect it to pick up and, and get a bit of flow going. Yeah, 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 and sort of, you know, get up to the bank line a bit more in the middle of winter. Yeah, right. So it's low. It's, um, so that, that rain that we had in, in 16, how did that compare to when, when you were young? Would that, would that have just been a normal year or...? Yeah, you were just getting... Yeah, you'd more consistently get a year that had... That's sort of topping out six, seven hundred mil. Yeah. Whereas that was more common there. Now that's a high, this is a high year. Yeah, yeah. That's what we're doing. So what's, what's your sort of average year up here now rainfall wise? You don't seem to get the average year. You seem to be the six, sixes to sevens. Yeah. Or fours to fives. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That five to six gap. You're either an on year. I think it's just a number. It's a, there's a there's maybe a cyclone or two in it. Different. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> usually, usually you get a couple more. A few more fronts. Yep. So it's yep. sort of rain a bit. You need those significant rain rain events. Mm. You don't have enough of it. So it sort of sums up farming, doesn't it? It's, um, <laughs> it, it's famine or it's feast. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, what we're trying to do now is get more rotation, getting more water points and more paddocks. Yep. So we're getting some tanks dropped off next week because a lot of paddocks feed off common cloth. Right. Um, because water points are hard for the boars. The way the farm, yeah. the other end of the farm, so yeah, it's uh, you know, so I mean, that'll be coming pretty big, expensive. You've got to start pumping water up and yeah, you know, getting pumps and, yeah. and, and pipes and that in. And more, it's if it goes wrong, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you're tracing around the farm looking for a soggy patch and, yeah. and, and softening the river where you can't find it because there's water flowing over it, so no, yeah, and then you're in there up to your um, up to your, up to your knees in it, yeah, um. So we're trying to get a bit more of that, so we can just really park them in a paddock for a week or two mm. and move them on. Mm. Less pressure on the place. Yeah. Um, more sweet grass. Yeah. Keeps them off. Keeps them leaning on the fences, and mm. keeps the paddock getting stale. And just that's sort of the dream to get it to that, so you can really just every every Do week that or two grazing. Every week or two, you're just pushing them. And the paddocks are all about the right size. They can hold a mob of you know, either 50 young cattle. Or 30, 30 odd cows. Yeah. When the calves are on them, there's a bit more pressure on it. Yep. Yep. These three paddocks that go out there, yeah. that flat there, and this one. Okay. Uh, so I'll take the calves off them yeah. for six months. So they've had their, uh, they've probably been another three, four months of that. But um, so these are getting going now. Yeah. And how, how what, what sort of age do you stop your, your cows at calving? Uh, put the cows? Yeah. It depends. I've got cows 10 year old in there. Right. Um, look, some of them are still going strong. Yeah. Um, depends on the cow a bit. 13, you hear people getting up to 13, maybe 15 years, but that's rare. So some yeah. of the older ones there, I'm sort of keeping on. There's some really good cows in there. Yeah. Um, the 
go back to a bull a few bulls ago it was just just a bit of a cracker right okay and the calves that come through from them yeah i just say well I'll, I'll keep them going as long as i can yeah cool so if you get if you get male calves there will you keep some of those those bulls yeah i'll show you it's a couple of, you'll pick them you'll pick them when we have a look at them We try and get as breeders is you now you almost want a, a, an A shape, a bit of a triangle. Yep. So they're shorter in the front and bigger at the back. Yep. If the best cows we've got do that. A lot of them, if we can just get it flat, sometimes you see they pinch up at the back, yep. and we try and sort of work away from that. And the same with a good bull. Instead of having too much at the front, you want to try and get that thick right the way through. Yep. And we length and depth. So the longer you get them. <laughs> That's uh, you, you, some in here have got an extra rib. Yeah. I don't know if you ever noticed if you get it. Do you, you ever found one with an extra T bone? Every now and then, every now yeah. and then you have them come through with one extra rib. Yeah. yeah. There's a couple um, of cows in there. We had a bloke who came comes out and classifies cows and he picked up on it. Yeah. Yeah. He was quite good at picking them. I yeah. I just go for the long ones and hope that they're in there. Yeah. Um, but yeah. With the extra length, it's more for you. Yep. And if you can get that not tailing off at the back end, you get that drop of beef down the back leg. Yep. Mm, means something for you. Yeah, for sure. We, we went to England. Yeah. And they did something similar. Yeah, we went um, when I was in the in the Australian butchering team in 2014, and the, the tri then it was called the Tri Nations competition. Uh, it was a, a butchering competition between Australia, New Zealand, and Great Britain. Um, we went to the UK and had um, had the competition over there, and we it was part of a 14 day study tour that we did, and we went out and visited some um, some growers up in y York, York, Yorkshire. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And there was um, there was one guy that we visited there out at his farm, and he's actually imported semen from all over the world, from Brazilian, from Brazil, and from America. Uh, from France. from France, uh, from South Africa, and the the thing was to change the genetics of his animal t to produce a longer loin because that's where the dollars sit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. And he had the, he was selling them off as bulls, young bulls. Yeah. Um, so they they had that muscle conformation, but they also had that mm. elongated midsection, which the butchers over there were absolutely going yeah. bonkers about. You know. Um, even when we were over there in 2014, like you go into some of the butcher shops over there, and their price for for something like sirloin, okay, the porterhouse, what we, what we call the porterhouse over here, those guys were charging 75 pound a kilo. All right, so if we convert that back to Aussie dollars, you're looking at 150, yeah. 150 plus, well, depending on the exchange rate, dollars yeah. dollars per kilogram for sirloin. So you know, he's on a winner there if he yeah. can if he can. You know, get yourself a couple extra cuts out of it. It's a bit like lambs, you know, uh, lambs in in summertime when we're selling heaps of French cutlets. You know, you want to have a forty rib yeah. lamb loin, you know, just so you can keep all those French cutlets. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we're not quite at that stage yet. And with all of our bulls that we buy, we the big thing I look for is the length. Yep. We yep. Have a lot of depth in the older cows we've got. Yep. So and get, just keep that length up because as soon as they get short, it's hard to get it back. Yeah. Um, yeah. And. It's great when you see the calves come out, they just come out, they almost look like pigs that long. Yeah, uh, yep. You know, see that heifer at the back there. Yep. Probably keep her. Yeah. The young one. And she's got a nice lay frame to her as well, you yeah, know. She, yeah, she's, back. yeah. She'll grow out well. is that they are so quiet. Um, what happens with, with cattle and, and animals when they, when they go to the abattoirs, if they get stirred up and the adrenaline pumps into their systems, um, what it does is raise, raise the pH level and it ends up giving you a darker product. And quite often it, it is very sticky with, with all the adrenaline that's pumped into the system. For us, that doesn't perform. Um, animals that are quite like this, um, obviously they're, they're nice and relaxed and, and they're comfortable with where they are and they're less prone 
to have that high agitation rates that you, you see in the, in the um, in the things like this, especially the Brahmins, you know, and and the, and those those um, drought resistant breeds tend to be more flighty, more highly strung, and that when they when they do get put under stress, they release a heap of um, adrenaline into their systems, sends the pH level through the roof, uh, and it ends up with a bad product at the end. We so when we get them out, we'll always just up in near the yard, the little holding paddock there. Yep. We'll always have they always have a mate with them. Yep. So they're not they're not stuck there on their own for a week until they go. Yep. Um, and the from our place to the back of the trailer, 20 minutes over to the um, abattoir. We put them through first thing in the morning. Yep. So they hit the first of the kill run. Yep. They've they've hardly had time to think about it before you see them. Yep. And then uh, what Dave's saying there too, it also ties in with the whole organic thing. Okay, animal welfare un underpins everything. Looking after the environment underpins everything. 